This is a Lego brick. On its own, it's acrylonitrile butadiene styrene plastic brick. But when we have two, we unlock the magic of interlocking systems. Using bricks like these, you can create patterns, from fire engines in Lego cities to Millennium Falcons in Star Wars. And the focus of this video is exactly that, Lego patterns and counting them. As a first question, how many unique ways are there to connect these two bricks together? Perhaps everyone's first connection when they play around with Lego is the classic, stack one on top of another. Another one would be to use just two studs as connections. And thirdly, just one corner stud, like this. From here, a logical step would be to say, well, if we had a piece in the top right, perhaps we could connect one in the bottom right to get a fourth combo. If we take a closer look, this isn't actually unique. We can rotate the top piece to get exactly what we've made down here, without breaking apart any of the pieces. This isn't unique. Equally, these two pieces aren't a connection either. There must be at least one stud connecting the both, like the above. As a result, 2x2 two two bricks have three unique connections between them. What happens when we have two 2x2 two two bricks, but different colours? We can have all the same connections we had before, but we can also flip the positions of our bricks to generate a new one. With different colours, we have six combinations, double that when we have the same colour. This is cool, this is fun, but what's really interesting though is when we consider larger bricks. How many connections are there with two 2x4 two bricks? Two rows and four columns. At this point, if you have them, grab some Lego bricks and have a go. Explore mathematical space and combinatorics in playtime. And press play for a solution and extended puzzle where we look at a general case. If we are going to count combinations and build intuition, the best way to do that is by defining an order to make sure we keep track of va valid solutions, and crucially only count them once. Both pieces are identical, so if we lock one of them to the ground, we can just consider how this other piece can connect onto it. Luckily, given the location of studs in LEGO, there are only two orientations of this piece that will fit. One in the same orientation of the locked piece, like so, let's call this parallel, and one in the opposite direction, let's call this perpendicular. Let's grab a tab to keep track of the combinations. To start counting our parallel combinations, arrange the studs on the first row we can connect. Our first connection is this, is this one. Let's count it and store it at the top for reference. For our second one, we can move our top piece one click along to create this one, another combination. Continuing this on, we can get two more combos until the lengths match, four so far. However, we don't need to stop here, we can still count more. This piece can continue moving along the top row like this, creating our fifth click. And continuing this on until the end, we have six, seven combinations in total. While it may seem this last one is a rotation of the first one, we're okay. If we take a closer look, there are reflections. We can't rotate one to become another, so all of our seven are unique. Shifting our brick back and down one row, we can continue clicking along. This is one, two, three, and four to get full coverage. Like before, we can continue clicking along to do another combination, but this one looks oddly sim similar. In fact, when we rotate it, this is exactly the same as a combination we made two clicks ago. It's just a rotation, so we don't need to count this copy. Given the symmetry, this applies for any further combos on this row. They're all rotations of the previous clicks, so we can stop counting. Four combinations for this row. Shifting down to our last row only, our first connection would be this one. Notice a problem. It seems valid. And it is, except we've already counted this click before. Rotating this, we can see this is exactly the same as the seventh click we made on our top row. We've already counted this one. Given the same symmetry, all the combinations on the bottom row are just rotations of that on the top, so we don't count any on the bottom row. We've counted all our parallel clicks. Switching our top piece to perpendicular, we can start counting our other combinations. This would be our first one. Let's store this at the top. If we keep track of the last stud, 
we can continue clicking our way along until we reach the end, and we can also have one hangover, like so. In total, we have seen five combinations on the top row. Shifting down one row, we can get our first click as before, and continue along five times until we reach the end, with the last stud hanging. Five more combinations. Shifting one more row down, we can see we've reached the halfway point of our piece. A signal to watch out for some rotational symmetry. Our first click is fine, and so is our second one. Our third one is symmetrical both horizontally and vertically. All good. Our next one, however, is something we've seen before. It's just a rotation of our second click. We don't need to count this one or the one after as a result. This row has three valid combinations. Moving one click down, this one seems okay, but it's actually a rotation of our second row click. This is the same for every combination on this row, and actually the one below. Crucially, we've already counted every combination on the rows below this halfway point. We've finished counting. Summing them up, we have 24 combinations in total. 24 is surprising, considering that with 2x2 two two bricks, we only have 3. This begs the question, for our larger bricks with 2 by m number of studs, is there a general pattern? And if so, what's the formula linking m, the length of a brick, to the number of combinations? To get started, it might be worth taking a look at this larger brick of length 6, and applying a similar approach to what we did for the 2x4 brick, but taking into account the general case this time. As before, let's grab a tab to keep track of the combinations and lock one of the pieces down. To start counting our parallel combinations, arrange the studs on the first row we can connect. Our first connection is this one, and continue along for the length of the piece, M. However, we don't need to stop here, we can still count more. This piece can continue moving along the top row like this, until there's just one click left, M minus one clicks. If we had sum the M clicks to get to the end of the brick, and the further M minus one to get all but the last one hanging, we have two M minus one combinations for the first row. Shifting our brick back and down one row, we can continue clicking along, this one, and click all the way to the end, M number of times. If we continue clicking further than this, we encounter the same problem we did with our two by four brick. They're just rotations of the ones on this row previous. In total, we just have the M combinations for this row. Again, like before, we can shift to our last row only, but none are valid. They're just rotations of the combinations we encountered on the first row. As a result, in the general case, we'll have 2M, minus 1 and M combinations in the parallel orientation. Switching our top piece to perpendicular, we can start counting our other combinations. If we keep track of the last stud, we can continue clicking our way along until we reach the end, M, and we can also have one hangover, like so, plus 1, in total M plus 1 combinations. Likewise, our next row will also be M plus 1, and thinking back to our 2 by 4 brick, this M plus 1 combo will repeat for every row until we reach the halfway point. The halfway point will be M over 2, so we can write this concisely as M over 2 lots of M plus 1. At this point, we would have reached our halfway point and only need to count up until there are two lines of symmetry, horizontal and vertical, like before, which is here. If we look at the number of places the last stud has moved to get to this position, it's M over 2 plus 1. Again, the redundant symmetry we looked at at the other rows of our 2x4 bricks apply here, so we can stop counting. In total, summing up both the parallel and perpendicular combinations, in general, we get m, m squared over 4 plus 4m as the general pattern. This is a nice pattern for these LEGO bricks. If you had a go, comment the number of combinations for the 2x6 and 2x8 bricks below. Please note, this only applies when M is greater than 2. When M is 2, it won't follow on, as it essentially has too much rotational symmetry as a square. For next steps, leapfrogging off of this, a natural progression would be to look at combinations with three pieces. 
or look at different piece combinations, including the 2 by n pieces, where n is odd, and even other irregular pieces. Even minifigures count. This puzzle is a tiny window into how computer scientists, mathematicians and problem solvers like us think about large problems. So keep solving, keep playing and keep having fun. Thanks for watching Beat the Calculator. See you next time for more logic and maths fun.